Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Hope you guys are having a great day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure an S3 bucket so that you can publicly access some of the files that are in it. And this is kind of useful whenever you need to host files that other people can download from the internet, such as images or like MP3 files or movies. So imagine you have a website that has um, the ability for people to upload images and other people need to see that. You probably want to configure a public accessible S3 bucket. So with that being said, hopefully you already have an Amazon account created. If you don't, it's pretty easy to get going. Um, but once you've signed in, you see here I'm on the dashboard after logging in. And what we're going to do is go to the S3 service page. So now what we can do is configure something called an S3 bucket. Basically, this is a storage location that you can upload as many files that you want to. And Amazon doesn't charge you that much for uploading and storing these files. So let's just go ahead and click on create bucket. And we're going to name our bucket WDJ My Uploads. This naming has to be unique so that no one else has the same name as you, but it's pretty easy just to add some letters to make it unique. And I'm going to go ahead and do the default region of US East, but there's a lot of regions that you can choose from. Um, now, the main takeaway from this video that's different about configuring this bucket versus some of the other videos I've done is that this one needs public access. So what you want to do is uncheck this checkbox, which is basically a a guardrail to prevent people from accessing your bucket from the outside. So you want to make sure that is not checked so that people can access your bucket. But that is just one layer of security. There's another thing that you need to configure to allow people to actually get objects from your bucket. So make sure if you turn this off, you have to acknowledge that you are making this bucket accessible to the internet and it could be considered unsafe if you don't have it configured correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and say acknowledge and I'm going to go down here and just go ahead and say create bucket. So congrats, you have a bucket created. It is now accessible from the internet, but there is another configuration that you have to do. So let's just go ahead and show you that. Once you click on your bucket, you can go to the permissions tab here. And what you wanna do is you need to actually configure a bucket policy. So a policy is something that you attach to the bucket that tells Amazon who and what you want to allow to come into the bucket. Um, and kind of define like what actions people can do on your bucket. Like for an example, if you want them to be able to download files or if you want them to be able to upload files, you can configure those differently depending on their roles or if they're public um, accessed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this edit button for the bucket policy. And what you can do is you can click po policy examples to get a better understanding of what some examples you can use. Um, or you can also do the pup the, um, was it, what is it, the policy generator. So if you click on this one, it'll take you to a new page where you can generate a policy based on some criteria. I'm just gonna go to the examples page because I already know like what I want. But you can scroll down here and it says, granting read-only permissions to an anonymous user. So you can read through this to get more information, but basically we're saying anyone on the internet should be able to read files from this bucket. So I'm gonna copy this policy. You can also click on this little copy icon here. And I'm gonna copy this policy and I'm gonna paste it directly into that text area down here. And we need to change a couple of things. Uh, actually, just one thing, to be honest, we just need to change the name of the bucket. So this is something called an ARN. And what this does is it's like a, a unique identifier for your resource on Amazon. So you need to change this to match the name of your bucket, which happens to be the same ARN up here. So if I were to just kind of copy the WDJ my uploads and overwrite this here, and also remember the slash star means all the items in the bucket. You can configure this with like prefixes. So for an example, let's say you have inside the bucket, you have an uploads folder. You could say, I only want the uploads um, path to be able to be downloaded from the internet. But in this example, let's just say all of every file that's in the bucket, just give the public read access, okay? So, so at this point, let's just go ahead and click um, save changes. My head might be blocking that, but there is a button down here that says save changes and I'm going to click it. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go back to the bucket and let's upload a file and I can show you kind of what you can do with that. So let's just go ahead and click the upload button here and we are going to select a text file that's on my desktop. So let's go here and select test.txt. This is just a really basic file with some text in it, but let's just go ahead and upload this file. And once it's done uploading, I'm going to show you that you can actually grab this file from the internet. So let's just go ahead and click on the test TXT that is down here. And you can get a link to where this file is. So if you go down here, there is an object URL. And if you select this link, it'll actually open your file into a new URL. So 
just keep in mind this link right here. Let me, um, I can't really zoom in on it, but this link right here, this is the URL to your bucket. So any file that you upload to your bucket, any object that you put in your bucket, you can access it by just changing the URL a little bit. So you can kind of use your imagination and see how this could be useful, right? So for an example, let's say we wanted to upload another file that is an image. So let's just go ahead and try to find an image of like a cat. I believe I have one somewhere in my downloads folder. I might not have one. Let's just do this lock.png, okay? So I'm gonna upload a picture of a lock um, graphic and we are gonna show you that we can actually access this from our browser now. So first of all, let's just open this up and this is the lock PNG file. It's really huge, so this is kind of a bad, bad example. And let me let me zoom out. So there you can see the image. But what I want to show you is that you can actually like load up a new browser about blank. I don't remember how to do this. I think it's like this. All right, so let me just go to about blank page. And I'm going to show you real quick. If we just modify this in line here, make sure you can see my code. We are going to basically just edit this body as HTML, and I'm gonna put an image tag in here. I'm gonna say image source is equal to that location, and I'm gonna go ahead and just end that tag and hit enter. Now you can see that the image showed up on the HTML, right? So any file that you upload to the bucket now is accessible to the public. So just keep that in mind and be careful because you don't want to upload maybe a sensitive PDF or some type of sensitive file that you don't want users downloading. Um, to that bucket. Last thing I'll show you is that sometimes you don't want to just upload images. Sometimes you want to upload like text or JSON. You can use the fetch method that's built into the browser to download or fetch those files as well, right? So if I go back here and say test.txt, I should be able to fetch that text file and kind of render it. So I'm going to do a promise chaining here. I'm going to say response, and I think it's just response.txt. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and just chain that to another console log. And if I run this, so if you run this, you do get a cores issue. So I think that is another configuration that you have to set up on your bucket because I'm trying to access this URL from a different URL from Amazon. So let's just go ahead and see if there is a configuration we can do on this. Let me go to properties and I believe there is a cores setting. Maybe it's on permissions. Let me go back to the permissions and say cores. All right, so there's a cross origin res resource sharing. Let's edit this and see if they have an example here. Um, they may not, so let's just go to learn more, and I believe you do have to set up uh, some cores configuration here. All right, so they do have an example right here. I'm going to see if this works. I haven't actually, I didn't really prepare for this part of the tutorial, just kind of going off and doing some stuff. But I think what we can do is just say allowed origins of star here, and I could just say allowed methods is git. And I believe this should hopefully do something. Let me just try to save this. Now I can go back to my other terminal down here and rerun my fetch. And notice here, we do get back a response now. We're not getting that cores issue, which is kind of a security guard in place that prevents browsers from accessing files from locations that they shouldn't be accessing. But see here, we do get back the text now from the promise chain and we printed it out. There is another piece of um, configuration you can do on the S3 bucket to make it more act more like a web server where it hosts your files. Um, that's actually pretty easy to go to. You click on the properties tag and you go down to the bottom and there should be a static website hosting. You can actually enable this and specify like what your index file is supposed to be, what your error page is supposed to be. But I might leave that for another tutorial, but you can kind of um, go through here and just do some cool stuff with this as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial enjoyable, give me a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment below if there's something that I could expand upon or explain better or S3 buckets and making them publicly accessible. And like always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you wanna become a better web developer or DevOps engineer in general. I'm gonna have a lot of videos like this in the future that should hopefully improve your game.